what shall we do? Do you ask that question? Or do you already know? It don't matter, either one is good. But do you ask that question? What shall we do? That's what, that's what he said. He told them, don't go after this food for perishing. All the stuff sometimes we accomplish and do in life, it's perishing. The word of God said, my word will last forever. Labor not for the food which perish, but for the food that endureth unto everlasting life. You got to come to who you are these 70 years on this earth. You got to come to this place. And in that place, that, that bread of life that you're eating, that what you are consuming in, that's filling you up, that's putting, giving you the desire that you need, that's what you got to put back out in the world because God has called us all for that, the word of God. If these words abide in me, he'll abide in you. And so that is all of our call that is a believer of this gospel of Jesus Christ. And ye will not come to me that you might have life. That's the problem. We don't go to God. We don't come to God when there's a problem. We don't go to God as fast as we should. So don't you dare tell me you don't know what to do next if you believe who Christ is. Because he died, he shed his blood for you, and he, and he indwelt the power of the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit's job to tell you everything that you're going through, to comfort you while you're going through it, just like we be in comfort in the depths that we deal with. That's the belief that he's telling them. And when you believe that, it's a tough belief. It's a tough belief. You know why it's tough? Because you're going against your soul. You're going against your mind and will and emotion. You're going against you. You're going against what you think as opposed to where you should be with God. Are you really, can you really believe in, can you really bring in the eternal life? Can you really bring that into your mind? Can you really keep that in your emotion? What should I do, Lord? What do you want me to do? Believe on him that has sent you but look you have to receive him you got to eat the word you can't believe Jesus unless you know the word so as you eat the word now you can believe but don't you fool yourself don't you dare fool yourself if you don't eat that word of God and you don't consume what God is saying in his word about everything for the bread of life is he which cometh down and giveth life unto the world. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never thirst. For he that believeth in me shall never thirst or hunger again. I have come into the world that whosoever believeth on me shall, shall not abide in darkness. And I pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter. Praise God for the Holy Spirit that he, that he may abide with you forever. But Jesus says in John 15, 7, if you abide in me and my birds abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. When you're going through something, that's the solution. I'm asking God, I'm going to God, this hurts. I feel this pain, the loss, the missing. It hurts, Lord. But you gave me the power of the Holy Spirit. You gave me a comforter. And if you gave me a comforter, I'm looking for a comforter. I'm asking, I'm seeking, and I'm knocking. God has given us the bread of life. The objective is receive it, eat it, and then share it. In today's sermon, from the Church of the Living God, Temple 208, we have our very own assistant pastor, Billy Dowdy, who loves to bring you the Word of God in a teaching mode. So get your pen and paper and sit back and enjoy. Praise God. Amen. We thank Him on today. We thank Him on today. How many know that the Spirit of God is in this house? <laughs> Amen. Amen, amen, amen. He is here. Praise God. And I thank God. I give all honor to God, who's the head of my life. You don't have to apologize for praising God. I give all honor to God, who's the head of my life, thanking for his son, Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit. It's done for me because that's everything that I believe and I stand before you. 
I'd like to give honor to the bishop of this house and his family. I thank God for assistant pastor, Dr. Gwen Rogers. I thank God for Dr. Arlington Rogers. And, and to the best, one of the best gifts in my, in my life, my lovely wife. I thank God for her. We did 41 years and it had to be God. It had to be because we believed and I thank God for her. I'm not a perfect person. And I know she's seen some flaws, but she stick with me anyway. So, you know, I, I, sometimes I think about it. I say, well, she's, she's still with me. And I know for a fact that it's love. Otherwise, she'd been out. She said, I'm getting out of here as fast as I can. Amen. So I thank God. And I just pray uh, that God forgive me for all my sins as I stand before you to give you the word of God. I thank God for the opportunity to pray and I just ask that you pray for me and that we pray together and that we receive all that God has for us in these days and these times, which is pretty much. So Lord, bless us and let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in the sight of God, which is my strength and my redeemer. Yeah. Then I like to say, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And I say to you, greetings to everyone here today. So good to see you out to receive the word of God because you will need the word of God at some point in your life. In my life every day. Amen. Right? And then I want to encourage you of what I've already said in my review here is that I told you uh, that we should be MVPs. Yes. And the MVP is, we went over a little bit in Sunday school, MVP is, is you need to what? Who knows? Who's been following it? It's been following the word that I help them. Nobody kind of forgot it. It's okay. I ain't going to mess with you too much. But uh, what was it? Meditate, visualize, and personalize. Everybody hear that? Be an MVP? We found it out in the morning, even in Sunday school, real briefly, was that if there's some places in time where you feel like God isn't there and you don't know what to do, well, if you uh, begin to know what you put inside of your vessel, then guess what? It'll come out. If you're, not, if you're putting junk food in your vessel, how can you expect anything to come out? Amen. Only thing you're going to memorize or only thing you're going to meditate on is going to be the junk that you put inside your flesh, right? And the only thing you're going to visualize is the damage that that junk can do to you. Yes. And then you're going to personalize it because it's going to happen to you and you're going to have to go see the doctor. You're going to have to do what? But the, point, the key point is, is that all I have to do is pray. Then the challenge comes, doesn't it? After you pray. So who got their phones out? Because uh, Dr. Gwen Rogers don't like those phones going. I don't either. Usher's going to start coming around grabbing your phones. We might grab them at the front. I'm talking to this row right here. I'm talking to that row back there. But, but you all are mature. I, I know that. But I'm just saying, you, you could have went through that phase too, you know, to where, to where you think that whatever you're doing is more important than what I'm saying now. Amen. <laughs> what Dr. Rogers is saying now, what Dr. Arlington Rogers, what the bishop is saying, you dare come into this house and think that your phone is more important unless you have those scriptures on that phone and you following us and you trying to mature isn't that how we did it, Gwen? Amen. We sat here, there was some of the boringest preachers sometime we had to hear, and we sat there, and I know I did, and I know Bishop did, and I was like, what is this man trying to say to me? And it was hard work. But I'm thank God that that man was trying to say something to me about God. So MVP, if you can't do that, you know you're off track, right? Amen. Basic living principles are what? Somebody give me the, main, the first living principle that you should live by. Give me that real quick so I can move on. Otherwise, we're going to be here for two hours. Wow. 
Give me a living principle. That's a living principle. But I can make it even simple, but more simpler than that. Believe God. You can't forget that, can you? Can you put that in your MVP bank? Yes, you can. Okay, all I have to do is, is, is believe who God says he is. That's how I'm going to go through my, right, my life, the rest of my life. Okay. That's the living principle. Okay. And then what? You got to keep yourself in a position to hear the word of God. You got to hear the word of God. That's a living, you, okay, I believe, but and I'm not going to hear God's word no more. You'll fail. So believe, hear, what else? Then I got to see the word happening. If I don't see the word happening, then it really is not real to me. That's a living principle. Trust. Trust is comes right there with obey. But now that I hear, see the word of God, I know God is real. And God tells me, and I know it's real. He said, don't do that. But guess what? I disobey God. That's a living principle. And then here, what we say at the Church of the Living God is, we say, now you know all of this, you share it. If you grow in a family, you better share some living principles with your family. Because your family is going to fail. If, if your kids don't know who God is and you raise them up to that point, then they're going to fail because they didn't obey. You're not going to fail because you're going to walk around and say, I told them who God is. They know who God is. We talk about God all the time. Those are living principles, okay? That's just an introduction to what you need for, for today, all right? You still with me? Did I lose anybody? Anybody tired of me yet? How do you stay in good relationship with God? How do you stay in relationship with God? I believe the sister told us, but I give you a principle there. To love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. That's, that's what she was saying. She said it for me. When I love God, I'm in a good relationship with. How do I please God? Without faith, it's impossible to please him. So I please God by understanding in my relationship who God is and what he's telling me and why he brought me on this earth. Not why I think I'm on this earth. Not why I found to be on this earth. But I did those other principles that I told you to never forget. Ask. A-S-K though. Ask, seek, and knock. When they had the conversation with the disciples and they were wondering about eating food and all of that, he said, your father already know what you need. Yeah. All you have to do is ask him. Right. Ask, seek, and knock. So if you're not doing those things, I want you today to just ask yourself, then really, where am I? And what, and what am I waiting, and what am I expecting to happen? So that was just a review, Okay. He said in Matthew said in, in Matthew 7 and 7 said, ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth and he that asketh findeth and to him that knocketh it shall be open. God knows how to give us a good gift. I want you to, and the topic was, and I think uh, Dr. Roger Gwen Rogers for, for uh, presenting gospel. But the topic is the Father has given the world the true bread, which is life, okay? And the theme is Jesus answered and said, and, it say, and said, it is written that man shall live by bread alone, right? We know that, right? And then the scripture's lesson that I want you to focus on with me as I give you this word. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, Moses gave you not the bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. John 6 and 33 says, For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth you life unto, and to this world. John 1 and 14, and the word was made flesh 
and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, I want to go to, and I'm going to read for a couple minutes here, and then I'll finish up this word. So the background scripture is coming from Exodus 16 and 1 through 35. I'm going to start here at Exodus 16 and 4. Follow me through right now. Look at the print. See the print. I think it might be up on the, on the view, but bring this in now because this is what I'm going to spend the next 20 minutes on and then we'll be done. All right. What are y'all thinking right now? What? Righteous brother with the sunglasses. The brother with the sunglasses said he's thinking about Jesus. I appreciate it. <laughs> and I know he is because his, his, his grandma used to tell me that every time he passed through the, the, by the churches, he said, they'll go, to, they'll go to God's house. So I already know where he's going in life. Uh, DJ, you, you, got, you got one. He, he see it solidly. Let's look at this word and see what's happening real quick. You have to follow me, though, because I'm going to roll it and I got to get past this. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day that I may prove them whether they will walk in my laws or not. Well, if he did it then, you don't think he's proving you now? I believe he's proving you. <laughs> and it shall come to pass that, that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. And Moses and Aaron said unto all the children of Israel, At evening then ye shall know that the Lord has brought you out of the land of Egypt brought you out. So you should know that's the, that's the meditation, that's the MVP, that's the memorization. You got to remember what God has done for you. Do you remember the last thing that God has done for you? Do you rotate it in your life every day? Do you thank God for your even existence? Do you do those things? As you do those things, you, you, you stand in the place that God wants you. Uh, seventh verse, and in the morning then ye shall see the glory of the Lord for he hath, for, for, for that he heareth you murmuring against the Lord, and what we that, what are we that you murmur against us? In other words, Moses is saying, why are you murmuring against us? What happened was, is that sometimes in life, as we live through our life, what happens? We like the good stuff that happened, and we can't get away from it, but that's the stuff that's going to kill you. That was the thing with the Israelites. They were in bondage. They were trapped. They had to leave Egypt. The workforce was on them hard. They were slaves. And God want, don't want us to be slaves. God wants us to be free all the time. Free in everything. Not worried. Remember, if you're going to succeed every day in your life, you can't take no thought for tomorrow, which is rough, which I work on all the time. Because sometimes the thought for tomorrow is bad and you don't even know how to get out of it and you're so messed up as a believer that we don't even know what's next to do. And next to do is easy. Next to do is just pray. That's it. Next to do. And after you pray, what you going to do? Next to do. Next to do is going to be what? Believe. The step principle that I already told you. The next principle, trust. Are you trust? No, I don't trust because it looks so damaging far ahead on the next day that I can't get through it. My wife and I, we have to trust that one day we're going to have air in our house again. <laughs> so God wanted to prove the children so they would know that he was with them, right? And so he's bringing them through, right? And he tells them on the sixth day, you're going to take a little bit more because it's going to be a little bit more there for you. Because on Sunday, you're going to be relaxed. Or on the, on the seventh day, you're going to be relaxed. 
you ain't going to have to go out. You're going you're gonna to praise God. So that was the instructions. And, mo and, and what happened in the seventh verse where I'm at right now was they got stuck and they start murmuring. That's warning I just want to give you today. Murmuring. God know when you're murmuring. He know when you're murmuring. And think about it. When you're murmuring, you're not satisfied with God. I think Dr. Rogers said we sung a song, Satisfied with Jesus. Said he'd be my comfort, said he'd be my guide. Looked at my feet, they looked new. Looked at my hands, and they did too. Ever since that wonderful name, my soul been satisfied. How many soul is satisfied? Whew, we got to do some work here. So now, now be careful because we are soul beings. That's right. And if you really got it, you clap your hands. That means that your mind, your will, and your emotion is all lined up for God. Amen. And sometimes the will's not there. Sometimes I get up on Sunday and say, my will is not to go out and hear the word. But my mind says, shut up, Will. Go hear the word because we're going to need the word. Yes. And then my emotional state is really messed up. We, 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 were in, we, we all this year been in an emotional state of our loss. But we got to bring our soul up in, in line. And so now the soul is in line because in the loss, in the loss of my son leaving this earth, I got to realize emotionally, emotionally, the real emotional love is that God has given him eternal life. And in his eternal life, I got to emotionally down here master the fact that what? That life is going on with Derek. Yeah. Life is going on with Bishop Singletary, but we still stuck down here. And so we want to be lined up. So at least my days, I'm lined up. And I'm not going farther than this day. And now what? The Holy Spirit can come in. They say don't do it. Uh, and, and so we just get back to the eighth real quick. And Moses said, when the Lord shall give you in the evening flesh to eat and in the morning bread to the full, for, for that the Lord heareth your murmuring, which you murmur against him. And what are we, your murmuring, are, are not against us, but against God. That's what Moses telling us. like, what are you telling me for? God told you, you wanted to get out of Egypt, you wanted to get out of slavery, I'm taking you to the promised land. Why are you crying? That's because you have a little discomfort? You're discomforted in the wilderness? You couldn't follow the path in the wilderness? But Moses got to hear this, because he want them blessed. But they murmur. I believe sometimes believers murmur just a little bit too much. I believe, we, I, I believe we complain just a little bit too much. I believe sometimes we say, why me? When something don't happen that you expecting to happen, why me? I don't know. I, I kind of done lost track of who God is now. And I'm starting to think I'm worse. Somebody's doing better than me. 16 verse, this is the thing which the Lord has commanded. Gather of every man according to his eating and eating an armor of every man according to the number of the persons that take ye every man to them. So an the armor is is about uh, two courts, two courts. And the children of Israel did so they gathered so more, some more, some less. Right. And when they did meet with an armor, he gathered much and had nothing over. And he that gathered little had no lack. They gathered every man according to their eating. And Moses said, let no man uh, leave, or leave of it 
in the evening to the morning. In other words, take everything. I don't want anything left because the Sabbath day is coming and you don't. And when you come out here and you didn't hear what I told you, when you come out here again to gather, there's not going to be anything there for your family because I because I put more out on that sixth day for you to gather and take in. But if you were hard headed and you didn't follow the, the steps and you didn't obey, then your family not going to eat that day until Monday. And they gathered every morning, every man according to the eating, and when the sun went down hot, it melted. Let's go up one on 20. Notwithstanding, they hearkened not unto Moses, but some of them left of it until the morning and the bread and the worm and, and it and the breed worm and it bred worms I'm sorry and it bred worms it stank and Moses was wroth with them because they didn't follow what God told them to do and they gathered it every morning until every man into their family notwithstanding they heart not unto Moses they stopped listening to Moses but some of them left of it until the morning and the bread worms and it stunk and Moses was mad and they gathered it every morning, every man, according to it, and it got waxed hot, whatever was left. And he said unto them, this is that which the Lord has said, tomorrow is the rest, is, is the, rest the holy day, the Sabbath, uh, bake which you will bake, and sieve that which you will sieve, and that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until the morning. So they had what they needed to get through their Sabbath day, okay? Now, let me go down to where I want to get to. Well, no, I'm just going to keep reading because I don't want to get off track here. I got about 10 minutes. Somebody say, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. Amen. And it came to pass the sixth day they gathered twice as much. On the 16th, he said unto them, this is what the Lord told you. And then we go down to 24th. And they laid up till the morning. Moses bayed out and... And it did not stink, neither was there any worms, because they followed. So that was the group that followed. And when Moses said, eat that day, for that day is the Sabbath day unto the Lord to you, that day you shall not find it in the field. Sixth day you shall gather it again. He's telling them on the seventh day, which is the seventh Sabbath in it, there shall be none. And it came to pass that there went out, of the people on the seventh day wasn't listening to gather and they didn't find anything. And the Lord said unto Moses, how long will you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws, which is God's laws that God is telling you. For that the Lord has given you on the Sabbath, therefore have given you on the sixth day a, the, the bread of two days. Abide ye every man in his place. Let no man go out of his place on that Sabbath day. So the people rested on the Sabbath day. We want to rest on the Sabbath day. How many like rest? I do. And the house of, and the house of Israel called the name of the, what God was providing them was manna. And it was like a coriander seed, white, and the taste of it was like a, a wafer made with honey. And Moses said, this is the thing which the Lord commandeth, fill an armor of it and keep it for your generation. Now this is, this is the MVP right here. For this is a thing which the Lord commanded, fill an armor of it to keep for your generation, that they may see the bread, that's the sin, wherewith I have fed you in the wilderness when I brought you forth from the land of Egypt, from slavery. And Moses said, uh, Moses said unto Aaron, take a pot and put an armor full of manna therein and lay it before the Lord to be kept for your generation. The Lord commanded Moses, so Aaron laid it before the testimony to keep and the children of Israel did eat 40 years until they came to a land inhibited, they did not eat any more manna. So 40 years he fed them in the wilderness and he wanted them to remember that in that generation all their lives until they came out to the Canaan side. Now, that was, that was the background. I can finish now 
if you will. Scripture lesson says this. Go back to my scripture lesson. Jesus is the bread of life. That's where we're going. In the theme. And Jesus answered and said, It is written, The man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Eat the bread. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he that cometh down from heaven and giveth you life unto the world. And the world was made flesh and dwelt among us, that the glory as of God of the only begotten Son, full of grace and mercy. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and mercy came by God. In Romans, the word says, but, but what saith this? The word is near thee, even in thy mouth. And this is now my plea. My plea, if you have not accepted those who might hear this word, those who don't know God, now it's you who I'm pointing to, to accept Christ as your personal Savior. The Word of God says this, that if you shall confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that God has raised his son from the dead, ye shall be saved. To the rest of us, the objective for me speaking to you at this very moment now is for you to believe who God says he is, for you to receive what God has said in his word, and for you to eat the bread of life. Jesus answered and said unto you, Verily, verily. Now, Jesus said this in the context of this. We know about the 5,000 that got fed, right? And in the 5,000 that got fed, Jesus got challenged. Got challenged by the lawmakers. Because he had did it on the Sabbath day. They chased Jesus to his private place. He went to his private place, but the people were so excited because they were hungered and they needed to eat. And so Jesus provided them that meal that didn't run out, right? And so after that, the people were still chasing Jesus. And they caught up to him. And what I like about Jesus and our relationship and our good relationship that we have with Jesus, Jesus is not going to turn you down. Jesus is not going to pat you on the back if, 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 you, if you're not doing the right thing. Jesus is going to come straight out. The word of God is going to come straight out. And if you eat in the word of God, then you know exactly what you should do. You know exactly if you need to repent. You know exactly if you need to clear up some things there. Because Jesus don't play. Jesus shed his blood. He put it on the cross. I don't know too many people going to put it on the cross for me. So, he's, so, so now when the people catch up with him, after he come from his private place, John 6 and 26, Jesus answered them and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, you seek me not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat of the loaves and were full. Jesus told them, in the next verse, he said, labor not, and this is the message. I'm, I'm about there. Labor not for the meat which perish. Labor not for the meat which perish, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him have God the Father sealed. Labor not. So in our lifetime, in our whole what, the average lifespan is like 75, 79 for black people? In our 79th span of lifetime, labor not for the food which perish, but for the food that endureth unto everlasting life. You got to come to who you are these 70 years on this earth. You got to come to this place, and in that place, 
that, that bread of life that you're eating, that what you are consuming in, that's filling you up, that's putting, giving you the desire that you need, that's what you got to put back out in the world because God has called us all for that, the word of God. If these words abide in me, he'll abide in you. And so that is all of our call that is a believer of this gospel of Jesus Christ. Then Jesus said unto them, what sh and, and then they said unto Jesus, now he, I'm coming down to my conclusion now. Jesus said, then they said to Jesus, after he said that, then they said to Jesus, this is what the disciples said to Jesus. Then said they unto him, what shall we do? Do you ask that question? Or do you already know? It don't matter, either one is good. But do you ask that question? What shall we do? That's what, that's what he said. He told them, don't go after this food for perishing. All the stuff sometimes we accomplish and do in life is perishing. The word of God said, my word will last forever. And that's the word that we go after. So his disciples said, then said they unto him, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? Have you asked that? What I like about Jesus is he'll answer. Jesus will answer us. Let's get your answer. Let's look at that problem real, real quick. We've seen the problem they didn't follow, right? John 5 and 4 said, and, you sh and, and ye will not come to me that you might have life. That's the problem. We don't go to God. We don't come to God when there's a problem. We don't go to God as fast as we should. John 5, 42 says this, but I know you, that you have not the love of God in you. Now that's the people that was following Jesus after he fed them. Now look what happens. So they're chasing Jesus down forever now. They catch up with Jesus, thinking that Jesus is going to fill them again. But he breaks it down and he said, but I know you that you have not love. You have not the love of God in you. I have come in my father's name and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you receive. Jesus is telling them this. For had you believed Moses you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how shall, how shall you believe me? The solution. Then said they unto him, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, this is what I like about Jesus right here. This is the work of God that you believe on him who has sent you. How hard is that? What should I do, Lord? What do you want me to do? Believe on him that has sent you. But look, you have to receive him. You got to eat the word. You can't believe Jesus unless you know the word. So as you eat the word, now you can believe. But don't you fool yourself. Don't you dare fool yourself if you don't eat that word of God and you don't consume what God is saying in his word about everything, not one thing, about everything that we'll go through, about death when we go through death. What did God say? John 33 says it again. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Conclusion. For the bread of life is he which cometh down and giveth life unto the world. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never thirst. For he that believeth in me shall never thirst or hunger again. Yeah. I have come into the world that whosoever believeth on me shall, shall not abide in darkness. And I pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter 
Praise God for the Holy Spirit that he, that he may abide with you forever. So don't you dare tell me you don't know what to do next if you believe who Christ is. Because he died, he shed his blood for you, and he, and he indwelt the power of the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit's job to tell you everything that you're going through, to comfort you while you're going through it, just like we've been comforted in the deaths that we deal with. That's the belief that he's telling us. And when you believe that, it's a tough belief. It's a tough belief. You know why it's tough? Because you're going against your soul. You're going against your mind and will and emotion. You're going against you. You're going against what you think as opposed to where you should be with God. Are you really, can you really believe in, can you really bring in the eternal life? Can you really bring that into your mind? Can you really keep that in your emotion every time something goes wrong? I thank God as he prepares me for, for, for one of my ultimate deaths, even my mom. She's yet in this world, but if it wasn't for God, that pace would be rough. But I'm telling you now, I'm comforted. I'm telling you, I'm comforted. I wasn't comforted a year and a half ago, but I tell you now, I'm comforted. Because it's part of the process. And Jesus tells us how to get through everything. Says this in the close. If a man abideth not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered and, and men gather them and throw them into the furnace. But Jesus says in John 15, 7, if you abide in me and my birds abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. When you're going through something, that's the solution. I'm asking God, I'm going to God, this hurts. I feel this pain, the loss, the missing. It hurts, Lord. But you gave me the power of the Holy Spirit. You gave me a comforter. And if you gave me a comforter, I'm looking for a comforter. I'm asking, I'm seeking, and I'm knocking for a comforter to come in, just like we all do here. Don't we comfort each other? I'll comfort you the best that I can, but it is nothing compared to the internal comforting that the Holy Spirit will give you until we leave this earth. He said, if you keep my commandments, you have, you, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in love. Remember this, as we go through our days, we're here to help get through this world. If you keep my commandments. God, the Lord, is not slack concerning the promise. As some men count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that they shall all come into repentance. For the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, and in which heaven shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt, and with fervent heat, the earth also and the works that therein shall be burnt up. Nevertheless, according to his promise, we look for a new heaven and a new earth, that the, the Lord will come down, and all of this will be done. Everything will be done because Jesus finished the job. Jesus said unto them, my meat is to do the will of the Father that, that sent me and to finish his work. I thank God on this day. I ask that God, and I ask that these words work. I ask that you receive these words. I ask that you live these words. I ask that you believe these words. I pray that in your life as I close. I thank God for his eternal glory that he's allowed me to receive, that he's allowed us to receive. And no matter what it is, whatever we're going through, God's just got to be the first thing. Just got to be first. The commandments. Just got to believe. Got to believe it's going to happen. Believe you're going to get through it. And God will do it. And you're going to give him the glory at the end. You're going to just praise God the rest of it, all of your days. Thank you. Uh, again, I'll say this. There's enough word for all, enough for each, 
and none and none should have too much. So in Christ, there is a complete sufficiency. But those that did not eat the manna hungered again and died at last. And with many of them, God was not well pleased. Whereas those that fed on Christ, which is us, when we feed on Christ by faith, we shall never hunger and shall die no more. And with them, God will be forever well pleased. The Lord forever no, evermore. God has given us the bread of life. The objective is receive it, eat it, and then share it. God bless you, and I thank you for your time. Thanks for watching. Be blessed by sharing this message. Support our ministry by following us on all social media platforms like YouTube. Hit the subscribe and like buttons, Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. Your generous giving allows the church to grow, which supports our efforts in providing the needed services for the community. There are a variety of ways for you to continue your giving. Go to the links in the description below and God bless.